Hello. Uh, in this new paper in Sociology of Health and Illness, Federico Russo and myself advance the argument that there's been a dominant narrative in public health over the last five decades or more in the United Kingdom, but more broadly than that. This dominant narrative confuses the difference between the mechanisms of the causation of non-communicable disease and the mechanisms for their prevention. We argue on the basis of an analysis of the history of public health in Britain in the 19th century, that with the discovery of the cholera bacteria at the end of the century by Koch, and the coincidental um, realization at about the same time that if you provided clean water and safe sanitation, you eliminated that particular disease. This notion that there are simple quick fixes to complex problems took hold in the public mind and in the policy mind. Of course, these days, Medicine has a much more complex understanding of causation, even of um, very clearly uh, bacteria-based diseases. But the simple narrative has continued to hold sway in public health circles. What we go on to look at has been uh, examples of this, are examples of this. And there are three um, that come to mind immediately. First, with respect to cigarette smoking, of course we know that if you are exposed to cigarette smoke, it's a risk factor for the development of lung cancer and other serious illnesses. Similarly, we know if you consume high levels of alcohol, it can damage the liver and other organs in the body. And of course, if you consume too many calories or you consume more calories than you expend in energy, um, then you will put on weight. Now, those three simple risk factors, the proximal risk factors of those three diseases, suggest simple solutions i.e. you set about trying to change people's individual behaviour. This, we argue, as an approach, is fundamentally flawed. It's fundamentally flawed because it puts the onus on the individuals, of course, and we've known that for a long time. But it's also fundamentally flawed because it's making the assumption that knowing that an exposure leads to the disease tells you not so much what to do, it does stop the exposure, but tells you how to do it. Knowing that cigarette smoke is a risk factor for lung cancer doesn't tell you how to help people to stop smoking. Similarly, knowing about the dangers of ethanol doesn't tell you how to change people's drinking behaviour. And of course, uh, knowing that dietary calorific intake is a cause of weight gain doesn't help people to lose weight. And that, of course, is because eating, drinking, smoking, and other things like physical activity are social practices. So, so what we advocate in this paper is taking a sociological, a social practice approach to looking at these behaviours um, forensically thinking about the links between the infrastructures which support them, uh, the competencies that social actors need in order to execute them, uh, and the meanings given to these behaviours. And in so doing it is possible to look at and arrive at rather more um, complex means of thinking about prevention. In other words, what you do is explore the mechanisms in as much detail as you would the biological mechanisms, but recognising that they are social in origin. Now, of course, this is, it speaks to uh, um, the idea of complexity. And this is something that we also look at in the paper. And we recognise that politicians and policymakers, on the whole, don't like complexity. They like simple solutions to complex problems. And what we do argue is that that search for simple solutions to complex problems has not served us or other jurisdictions particularly well. And that's why we remain locked into the problems of epidemics of non-communicable disease across the globe.